Um, I want to start with just, again, a thank you to Senator Murphy and to Representative Feist for what I know has been uh, a great deal of work on this bill. Many, many hours over many months, and certainly uh, this bill has been around for years, but just this session um, I know has been a great deal of work, and I thank you for that, to get it to the point that it is now in, um, you know, through difficult situations and um, high stakes, as was said. And so it's important, so thank you for your work. Um, as a nurse of over 20 years and a senator from Rochester with major medical facilities in my district, I take my role very seriously to bring the voices of my constituents to this table and to this work on this really important and complex issue. I've been listening to the wide diversity of perspectives shared by people in my community, healthcare professionals, business leaders, concerned citizens, and today we are going to adopt significant concessions to bring this bill into a form that will placate many of the concerns of stakeholders that we have heard while still keeping a strong bill to get to uh, the issue and, and the work that we are trying to do. Um, so again, I, I take my role very seriously and, and in all of the work here at the legislature feel like it's important for me to bring the voices of the folks in my district to this work. So I want to take just a moment to share some of the stories and perspectives from my district about why this bill is so critically needed. Even at an institution often labeled as the best hospital in the world, and rightfully so, uh, that's the cornerstone employer in my community, nurses are struggling. Patient safety and well-being is suffering. The status quo is unsustainable. From my time in nursing leadership and my own experiences at the bedside, I know firsthand that many nurses have long passed their breaking point. So I just want to share a few, a few of those words. A constituent wrote to me, I was in bedside care and changed my job due to unsafe staffing levels every shift. The patients are being neglected in varying degrees due to physical limitations. Nurses can only be in one place at a time. I would love to return to the bedside. It was my first choice for a reason, but I'm unwilling to do so under the conditions that currently exist. I will not risk my license, and I will not allow myself to feel like I could have done so much more for my patients at the end of every day. A pediatrics provider shared, keeping, the Keeping Nurses at the Bedside Act is needed. We consistently do not have enough nurses, even on the pediatric side. A recently retired physician's assistant wrote to me, I know firsthand that the, that the hospital I worked in does not always consider the needs of patients or the nurses in their staffing decisions. They defend those decisions by saying they cannot afford to staff for peaks. I understand the concept, but where exactly did the patients fit into that formula? There were times when I was working there when staffing levels became unsafe for patients. Those recovering post-ops can take a turn for the worse very suddenly, and if it isn't discovered in time because a nurse simply has too many patients to take care of, the results can be very adverse. A patient wrote to me, every time I'm at the clinic, which is often for cancer treatment, I ask my nurses about this. They all say the same thing. Management doesn't listen to us. We need relief. Please tell legislators to vote for the nurses for the bedside bill. So I'm asking on behalf of at least the 15 nurses I've had by my side, please pass this bill. And lastly, uh, just yesterday, I got an email uh, from a former coworker, uh, someone who's in a different role now, um, who said, I'm formally writing to you to ask that you continue the fight for nurses at the bedside and safe staffing. We need help if our leadership is not going to help us, please pass this bill. So I'll stop there, the stories go on. Um, when all our legislating is said and done this session, and we've completed our budgets and the work for the people of Minnesota, I myself will return back to the bedside, probably next week. And so this is uh, very personal to me and very important to me as it is for nurses across across the state. Um, and so I carry the perspective of both, both being that nurse at the bedside and being a family. I, over the last year, uh, my son has been in the hospital multiple times, most recently just last week. And I always chat with his nurses uh, that are caring for him in the hospital, just from as a nurse to nurse. And you know, I'm always interested in their experience and how they came to nursing. And um, so through those chats just last week, um, without fail, every one of his nurses talked to me about their concerns around staffing, unprompted by me. I did not raise the topic it came up and they brought it to me. One nurse shared that she was the charge nurse and also you know, was struggling to balance her, her patient assignment while being a charge nurse. 
another nurse shared with me that they, on the small unit she was working on, they had had turnover about of a third of their staff over the last year. And the challenge that that brings of having so many new staff and just the, the in and out and, and not having enough staff. So this is real and this is important. And the, the, the work to get this bill in a place where it's at now that both um, meets the, the need and the um, urgency of the issue before us and has made uh, many, many compromises uh, over, the, over the session, I'm very, very grateful for because it will have a difference um, for nurses. But more important, importantly, this is a bill about nurses, but more than that, it's a bill about patients. At the core of this, this is about patients, to be sure that patients have the best care that they, that they need and that they deserve. And that's what nurses want to do, is to provide the best care for patients. And so um, just to wrap up, as we are doing the work of the legislature this session, we are passing really important legislation that is not leaving people behind, paid family medical leave, and making sure that all of our undocumented neighbors have the care that they need. Uh, this is right in line for that with me, that we are not leaving people behind. So after many, many years of nurses coming to the Capitol to say, we need help, we need support, <coughs> I am very grateful that this year we will not be leaving nurses behind.